Good afternoon to everybody. I'm, uh, I'm opening this, uh, this webinar today um, on behalf of the Chamber of Engineers and uh, Beko Valletta, um, who are our corporate sponsors. By way of introduction, I'm uh, Malcolm Zamit. I'm mm -hmm. the president of the, of the Chamber of Engineers, and uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you all to this, to this webinar, one of a series which uh, we um, uh, regularly organize with our longtime corporate sponsor, uh, Bank of Valletta. And uh, today's subject is about the um, uh, financing for uh, renewable and energy um, efficiency measures, um, what are termed as uh, energy loans. Um, so our uh, speakers today, whom I'll introduce shortly, will be speaking about the, the uh, uh, schemes that, that, that exist and will be also giving you more, more insight and about uh, the options that exist for the, for the financing of, of green, uh, green initiatives. Um, uh, the word green is uh, um, a noun which is uh, and and uh, an adjective which is nowadays uh, quite into our our uh, daily discourse. So we're speaking about a lot of of uh, measures and uh, aspects related to improving the uh, the impact. On, on the environment, re reducing the negative uh, um, impact on, on ecosystems, but also there is the aspect of uh, um, um, increasing the um, energy efficiency and also uh, therefore reducing costs, reducing costs on uh, uh, related to energy energy expenditure. So ourselves as, as engineers, especially, this is uh, a subject which is uh, very close to home. And uh, we, we, are, we are much into it through, through various means since we discuss um, uh, green uh, mobility, we discuss uh, uh, energy, energy efficiency and sustainable energy across the board, sustainable development, um, uh, which is uh, which encompasses basically all these initiatives and uh, many, many other initiatives where uh, I think today we will have the opportunity to hear and le learn more um, on what we can do to implement such initiatives. Uh, each investment comes uh, with, uh, with uh, a challenge, a financial challenge, um, as we know. And uh, um, uh, our guests today will be explaining to us the uh, options, the, the tools that exist that one ca can opt for to also uh, bridge that, uh, that uh, challenge and uh, also um, go ahead and, and actually uh, implement uh, green investments for 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 the uh, benefit not only for the personal benefit but also for the general benefit of of the environment all around us so with that um, brief introduction i will be giving you a a, a short overview of the uh, schedule for this uh, uh, webinar. So right after me, we will have a uh, presentation of the BOV energy loans by Mark Shikluna Bartoli, who is uh, the executive for product management and development at the Bank of Valletta. So he, Mark, is Bank of Valletta's executive responsible for development, development of business banking products. Uh, over the past nine years, Mark has stepped into both uh, EU and uh, national guarantee funds, mobilizing over 500 million in bank funds for Maltese business, businesses. On a personal level, Mark is engaged by the EU Commission as an expert in the fields of access to finance and, and the environment. After that presentation, we'll then have 
um, a presentation of the BOV energy loans eligible costs and the CLE Malta web tool by the European Investment Bank. So for this topic, we have with us uh, Roman Dojczak, who is an investment platform advisor in the European Investment Bank Advisory Services with a track record in consulting financial institutions on the implementation of financial instruments with an emphasis on climate action related fi financing. Furthermore, we have uh, Mr. Michel Ganado, who is a partner in the PWC advisory practice and is the consulting leader with over 30 years experience in managing comprehensive management, consulting assignments, and developing the firm's capability on EU and, and public sector, sector matters. To conclude today's, today's session, with, which is scheduled to conclude uh, at about half past six, we will have a uh, uh, time for question and answer. So uh, you will have the opportunity to also pose any questions and uh, we, will, uh, we will see at that point in time. And I am also um, sure that uh, if you have any questions following this session, which you would like to to um, forward to uh, the, the Chamber of Engineers, I am sure that uh, Bank of Valletta will be more than happy to follow up and, uh, and uh, answer to your, to your queries. So without further ado, thank you for the, the, uh, your attention for this introduction. And I pass on the word to, uh, to Mark Shekluna Bartoli, who will do the, uh, the presentation on BOV energy loans. Thanks, Mark. Thank you very much. Welcome. I'll be sharing my screen for this presentation. So as you correctly said, I'll take you through the BOV energy loans. Um, these are specific energy loans because they actually benefit under a specific fund. This is a, a fund of 54 million euros, which was launched in December um, in the Maltese market. And the features of this fund, it's a, quite an innovative instrument at the European Union level because it does three things. It provides a guarantee uh, to the fund, which means that the banks can provide more attractive terms and conditions to the lending. This is something that we've been doing for a number of years, so there's nothing really new about that. However, the fact that the, the guarantee is also complemented with an interest rate subsidy is a first. And the fact that you are introducing both a grant element, which is in the form of an interest rate subsidy, and the subsidized loan through a guarantee is, is a new dimension to an instrument. And also, it also offers uh, capacity building. This is an exercise of capacity building. And the reason being is that sometimes these investments um, are sometimes not easy to implement and roll out. Um, as engineers, you, you can appreciate the complexity in doing this. And so what the fund also does is has a capacity building to assist in basically developing a project pipeline. And those, those are the innovative features of the fund. As a bank, the way we're tackling this and the way we're presenting the offering in the market strategically is we're doing it through three avenues. One is through a personal loan for individuals. The second one is through a home loan product. We chose the home loan route because we understand that at that point in time, um, an individual will be considering doing quite a significant amount of energy efficiency investments. And also there's a business product. As you said, the business market is, is a unique market in itself. And we launched these products over these past six months. Um, we started with the personal energy loan, which was launched in January. This is a maximum loan amount of uh, 50,000 euros, uh, which has an interest rate of 2.5%. Obviously this excludes the interest rate subsidy of 2%, so effectively, the customer will be paying a 0.5% over the first three years of, of the loan, which makes it quite an attractive uh, financing solution. Um, and that's why, obviously, it, it assists the individual uh, get the benefit he needs from the investment itself. 
as well an attractive feature of, of, of the loan is the loan term. Um, some of these investments have a long uh, lifetime. And so the fact that the term can be over a longer term also makes the repayment much more attractive in line with the investment costs that they're investing in. So when normally banks lend on the average of around seven, the personal even less sometimes, in around seven year time frame, going up to 15 subject to the asset allowing it is, is very attractive. There's no collateral requirements in the case of personal loans and not even contributions. And the processing fees and repayment fees have also been removed. So this makes it relatively quite easy for the personal customer to access. This was launched in January. In April, we launched the home energy loan. The home energy loan is different. This is for those investments which um, are a little bit larger um, in your specific home. And that's why the loan amount goes up to 100,000 euros. The variable interest rate is even a little bit lower than the personal loan. The reason being because in home loans, when you borrow under a home loan, you will still be taking collateral. So since in this case, you will be taking collateral, we managed to transfer that benefit in an even more reduced interest rate. Um, and then obviously the interest rate subsidy of 2% makes an effective interest rate of 0.15 over the first three years, which is very attractive. Another feature of the home loan is, is the term. In this case, we even extended the term even longer um, to make the repayment even more feasible for, for the home loan customer. Obviously, this can be up to 25 or 40 years, subject to categorization laid out under the CBM directive. And for those of us who are not uh, in the financial services world, well, basically what this means is that in the case of first time buyers, they can go up to 40 years um, subject to not exceeding retirement age. In the case of you buying your second home, then it's capped at 25 years. Um, this is a regulation from the CBM. And obviously that's why the conditions are reflected in the term of the law. In this case, there would be a customer contribution up to 30%. Again, this is subject to certain regulations. It could be less. Home loan requirements, obviously collateral would still be there. There is no access to finance limitation there. And also no processing fees and then repayment fees. The general features, the purpose of the loan is, is to finance energy efficiency and renewable energy. Here, Roman will take us through in more detail on what these eligible costs really are. But the principle is that the loan should be a new loan. Um, it should be financed to finance the material, the costs, and the technical installation. Projects need to be implemented in Malta. It cannot be used to pre-finance grants, which basically means that if you have a project um, where you are benefiting from a grant and the project is based on five different kinds of investment, let's say, uh, my recommendation would be to select two or three of the investment costs which could go under the grant to be financed under the grant, while then you choose another two and those could be financed under the loan and you segregate the costs very neatly. And obviously the investment shouldn't have been completed or fully implemented um, prior to the approval of the loan. Two weeks ago then we launched the business energy loan. The business energy loan is much more focused on the business cohort, obviously, so the loan amount is much higher. Um, it starts with a fixed rate of 2.1% over the first three years, which then moves to a variable thereafter, um, providing quite an interesting offering for the business communities, particularly for the first three years. Security will be similar to other risk sharing instruments where we will not be taking the full amount of security a reduced amount. And again, here, the maximum loan term is 15 years, which is quite attractive, particularly for the business cohort, which is, again, on average, around seven years when we normally lend. Customer contribution would be minimum around 20%, and there'd be no processing and renewable fees. Since the business energy loan is the latest product, I'll, I'll go into some more details now on the business. It's quite open from an eligible enterprise point of view. Normally these, sec these um, financing facilities were open only to SMEs. As you can see now, it's also including mid caps, which basically 
would include nearly the vast majority of enterprises in Malta. And from an eligible sector as well, minor restrictions, um, mainly driven by state aid um, and some other restricted activities in the pure real estate development. Otherwise, all sectors are eligible under the scheme. This is an outline a little bit to a certain extent, a bit of a repetition of what I said before, just the main points which were not repeated is that the facilities are in the form of a loan and not an overdraft. And obviously the 750,000 is a maximum um, because this is um, under the de minimis state aid regime. So if you have already taken a certain amount of de minimis, your maximum loan amount may be a little bit lower. As I said, there'd be no fees, um, both processing and repayment fees. However, um, a commitment fee will apply. A commitment fee basically is that since the bank is allocating a sum of money to you to be used for an investment, if you don't take it up after a certain amount of time, which means you're taking it away from someone else, in essence, sometimes, then a commitment fee would apply. And this is a way to, to, to mobilize funds into the market as well. The term, again, as I said, is uh, 15 years, which also could include a moratorium of six months in certain cases. And the term, obviously, this is an important point, um, is based on the, the asset that is being financed. And that is an important consideration. So 15 years is the maximum amount, to be correct. Um, disbursements. Um, um, Obviously, at the moment, since the product has just been launched, there is still quite a time frame to, to disburse. However, we, we are encouraging that this is used at least one year from the date of the sanction letter. Um, and obviously, the lower amount of extendable security is also another benefit which we transfer to the customer in this case. State aid, as I said, um, the maximum would be 200,000 per undertaking. This would also include connected undertakings uh, for a period of uh, three consecutive years. Those are the main principles of the product from my end. Um, I think what we could do is pass on to Roman. So we are taken through the eligible costs and then as Malcolm suggested, we take questions at the end. So that's it from my end. Um, I'll pass the floor to Roman. Okay, so thank you, colleagues. Uh, thank you for inviting me here today. My name is Roman Deutschak. I work in the EIB Advisory Services, and uh, thank you, Mark, for your presentation on the financial uh, financial product. Uh, the natural question probably is why somebody from the EIB here now talking about eligibility criteria of the investment measures that uh, the loan product, uh, which Mark just presented to us, uh, will be supporting. And the reason is that uh, uh, the EIB right now is uh, together with uh, colleagues and the team uh, from PwC led by uh, Michel Ganado uh, is uh, implementing an advisory package, which uh, the aim of which is uh, to support the implementation of the financial instrument uh, aimed at uh, improving energy efficiency and renewable energy uh, financing conditions on the Maltese market. And this financial instrument is uh, was set up by the Maltese Managing Authority and the European Investment Fund. And the loans uh, which are enabled and supported by this financial instrument are provided on the Maltese market by Bank of Valletta and APS Bank. Uh, and uh, EIB advisory services are trying to support both, uh, both of these uh, uh, Maltese banks in, uh, in uh, implementing this financial instrument and uh, enabling uh, an improved uh, uh, financing conditions uh, to these projects. So this is the reason why I'm here and I will try to provide additional information and clarity on what exactly this financial instrument and uh, what exactly the, uh, the loan products which uh, uh, Mark just uh, uh, showed to us uh, can actually support. Uh, so first of all, there is a distinction uh, in the investment projects that uh, this instrument can support. The distinction is between the standardized and the non-standardized measures. 
the distinction is relatively uh, straightforward from the from the wording itself. Standardized measures are, are uh, just the mainstream uh, mainstream measures, uh, and I will take you through uh, through uh, uh, individual categories of these. Uh, the non-standardized measures are slightly more nuanced, complicated, maybe tailor-made, and uh, and uh, they require a bit more uh, technical uh, preparation for which um, uh, energy auditors or warranted engineers are needed. The standardized measures can be uh, implemented uh, by uh, private individuals and enterprises, whether SMEs or mid-caps, but the non-standardized measures are not possible to be implemented uh, and financed uh, for private individuals, uh, meaning homeowners, basically. Uh, the non-standardized measures are possible to be implemented only by the SMEs and the mid-caps. Uh, the standardized measures and uh, what exactly falls here and what exactly uh, these loans can support is uh, uh, relatively an exhaustive uh, list, which was agreed by the managing authority EIF and the the two uh, to do two banks uh, uh, together with uh, Bank of Valletta. And uh, the first category here is uh, the insulation. I mean, relatively straightforward. Uh, whether uh, insulation from from the heat, from water, uh, air tightness uh, measures, etc. Uh, I'm not a technical person, so I apologize. I will try uh, to resist the, the urge uh, to try to go into too much technical detail because today we were not able to uh, uh, to uh, have here also our uh, PwC team's uh, energy experts. So I will just tr sort of try to run through these measures and then please come back to me with questions if any. Uh, but I will try to be uh, uh, relatively brief. So uh, following, uh, we have here... Uh, uh, investments into uh, windows and doors, uh, glazing in, uh, enhancements, uh, etc. Uh, but uh, you also have uh, you also have uh, building uh, energy efficiency measures such as solar control systems, shading devices uh, covering the windows, apertures, etc. Uh, we will continue with the next slide where uh, we will now be moving from the building envelope to the uh, building uh, energy system, uh, specifically uh, space heating, uh, so heat generation uh, through the boilers, uh, heat generation control, storage tanks, etc., uh, circulator, circle valves, uh, and uh, and uh, so on. Uh, lighting is another standardized measure which uh, can improve the energy efficiency of, of the building. Uh, whether residential building or uh, uh, factory uh, pro production factory or uh, office uh, office spaces, uh, and uh, I think uh, not much uh, explanation is needed here. Uh, continuing then uh, with uh, building system measures, we have uh, uh, hot water. Uh, on this slide, we are we're saying domestic hot water, but I mean uh, uh, it, it can be also uh, hot water generation in. Uh, uh, for non-domestic use, uh, and uh, uh, here uh, this is again uh, boilers, uh, solar thermal system, uh, systems, heat controls, uh, storage systems, etc. Uh, I will also say that uh, this uh, PowerPoint slides will be uh, uh, can be made uh, accessible to uh, uh, to the organizers. So uh, if uh, if colleagues uh, uh, present today here will have questions or will want to have a look again, this is absolutely possible. Uh, ventilation systems uh, again are me uh, a standardized measure uh, possible, you know, both for the residential purposes and also by enterprises. Uh, and uh, this includes uh, this can include uh, heat exchangers, preheaters, uh, heat recovery units, uh, fans, circulators, etc. Um, I will continue with uh, uh, cooling systems. Very relevant uh, naturally in the Maltese market uh, due to the uh, climate characteristics of the, of, uh, of the islands. Uh, so here we have uh, air conditioning generators, heat cold pumps, compressors, uh, etc. And uh, an interesting uh, uh, standardized measure, which is also eligible under this financial instrument and can be supported by uh, by the, the loans. Uh, are uh, installation of charging stations for electric cars or uh, hybrid cars. Uh, and then we have, uh, ah, of course, the renewable energy uh, uh, related investments. 
uh, mm, this can be a uh, solar panels, uh, which is probably the the most um, frequent or the uh, the, mm, the, uh, the measure which will be probably uh, most frequently requested by the loan recipients. Uh, but uh, you are better experts on this, uh, uh, more familiar with the uh, Maltese market than uh, than I am. Uh, mm, an important uh, point to be made here is that uh, when it comes to residential loan applicants, if they are uh, connecting their renewable energy systems to the feed-in tariff uh, uh, scheme in Malta, uh, their investments are still eligible under this financial instrument. If, however, uh, you are looking at uh, a, uh, an enterprise which is installing renewable energy uh, systems, uh, solar uh, uh, PV panels, and uh, they also are connected to a feeding tariff uh, scheme, then as of now, the investment is not eligible. Uh, there are discussions pending with the Maltese Managing Authority, so perhaps there might be development on this issue, but for now, uh, if uh, if the uh, PV panels are connected to FIT scheme uh, by enterprises, they cannot be supported under uh, this financial instrument. But when it comes to the homeowners, uh, the FIT scheme connection is not an issue and uh, the financial instrument can support them. Uh, moving on to building energy management systems, uh, no, smart meters, technical, uh, uh, technical intelligence, uh, uh, centralized control for generation distribution, etc. Uh, software, uh, software technologies uh, which are helping uh, with uh, the energy management systems are also eligible, as uh, all the other measures that you can see on the slide. Uh, connection to energy supplies, uh, these are also eligible, although uh, uh, not uh, not sure to what extent this will be uh, this will be relevant on the Maltese market. But uh, if you do have uh, clients you are supporting in development of projects and uh, and uh, they have measures uh, uh, that you're proposing uh, in this area, then uh, the loan from BOV or APS Bank can support them. Uh, photovoltaic systems. Uh, are also eligible if not connected to buildings, but uh, since, as I said, uh, you know, uh, PV, PV systems uh, not connected to buildings are likely to be in demand only for enterprises. And in those cases, they will likely be connected to a feed-in tariff and that actually disables. So, so uh, this this might not be very relevant in reality, but, uh, but uh, as I said, the discussions are ongoing with uh, the managing authority. So, we will see. Uh, now we have a case study, and um, uh, the idea here is just uh, for uh, for you to go through uh, the individual measures from a theoretical uh, example, and uh, you know we we will try to reason uh, why uh, certain measures are eligible and uh, certain are not. In principle, I think the guiding, uh, the guiding principle with this financial instrument is that uh, there are no minimum energy saving thresholds prescribed. So it doesn't really matter how much energy, uh, how much energy savings are created uh, with individual measures, as long as, uh, as long as these measures can create some energy savings. So if, uh, if you see uh, the measures here, which, uh, which uh, can improve the uh, energy performance, of the building or of the of the enterprise, then uh, then uh, uh, they are eligible. If they don't improve it, they are not. Uh, I will not read them all now. I will take us to the next slide where you can actually see uh, what is and what is not eligible uh, in this uh, particular example. So uh, mm, changing the single glazed uh, aluminum windows to double glazed, uh, this is considered to uh, to improve the energy efficiency of. Uh, of the project promoter, so uh, this is uh, eligible under this instrument. Retrofitting a new re roof thermal insulation and new waterproofing uh, naturally is also considered to be improving the energy uh, efficiency character of the of the project. Repainting uh, walls internally and soffit uh, rather a decorative uh, measure and therefore cannot be funded by loans under this financial instrument. Replacing old AC split units with new AC VFR, VFR system, uh, this will uh, certainly create energy savings. 
uh, and therefore eligible. Uh, thermal cladding uh, uh, with uh, wall insulation, uh, scaffolding, new coat, uh, coating, um, uh, and uh, by extension, it will also uh, improve the aesthetics of the building. But the measure is eligible not because of the aesthetic improvements, but obviously because of the energy efficiency improvements uh, from the insulation. Uh, installation of the PV panel system on uh, on the roof under FIT system. In this case, it is uh, not eligible because uh, we're talking here about a company. If uh, we were talking here about a uh, homeowner, then uh, the uh, the assessment here would be uh, would be uh, eligible. And the last uh, point here is uh, changing old lights for new LED lights. And here again, uh, the aim is to improve energy efficiency standard, and therefore the measure can be supported. I will now move to non-standardized measures, but we, bef before I go into individual slides, I will have um, I will try to give um, a short, uh, um, maybe debrief to to explain to to, to to explain one more distinction between standardized and non-standardized me measures. As I said, the standardized ones are relatively exhaustive. Uh, in uh, and the, the the exhaustive list was provided in the slides before, and you can see it later on as well. When it comes to the non-standardized measures, the examples I will take you through are nothing but just e theoretical examples. The non-standardized measures, the most relevant eligibility factor there actually is, is an energy audit or a detailed energy study to be provided by energy auditors or warranted engineers. So if these energy experts will provide an energy assessment, for the enterprise. And in this assessment, certain measures will be proposed and uh, assessed as improving the energy performance of that enterprise, then uh, those measures uh, th those measures are eligible. So, um, so don't feel or don't be mistaken by the slides that I will show you. This is not an exhaustive list. If you will be assessing uh, uh, certain uh, certain companies, and you will be providing measures which you do not see in the following slides, but you assess them as improving the energy efficiency of that uh, project, then uh, then uh, they can be supported under the loans supported by this financial instrument. But nevertheless, uh, not to be uh, not to be just giving you an empty presentation. Together with our uh, PwC colleagues, uh, we try to consider what might be potential non-standardized measures that uh, you and other experts might be recommending to their uh, to their clients so uh, electric or hybrid vehicles uh, are are uh, included this the uh, this category actually explicitly by the managing authority and the the EIF uh, water saving measures are also uh, also uh, uh, um, explicitly mentioned so these are actually uh, these are actually uh, eligible uh, absolutely uh, then moving on and uh, here these are rather rather examples so it will really depend on the energy study or energy assessment that that you will provide so if if you will see that uh, variable speed drivers on electric motors and fans uh, are a possible uh, measure for for your client uh, which can improve the energy efficiency in that particular project then uh, this uh, could be eligible and this could be supported under the loans High energy efficient motors uh, is uh, the same story. Moving on, high uh, efficiency compressors and uh, leak control in uh, compressed air systems are also uh, uh, thought uh, to be possible measures that uh, uh, you uh, might be might be recommending to improve the energy efficiency and therefore eligible. Uh, reuse of waste heat from uh, the equipment, as well as energy monitoring, filtering, power factor correction, and voltage regulation are also some of the non-standardized measures that could be uh, could be eligible and supported. Uh, recover uh, recovery and reuse of the wastewater, and uh, high efficiency boilers or boiler upgrades uh, are also. Uh, uh, considered to be potential measures where energy efficiency can be improved and therefore eligible. Upgrades to the ventilation, air conditioning, and cooling uh, systems is another area under non-standardized measures, which if proposed under the 
uh, energy audits or energy studies uh, can be uh, can be um, funded by the loans under this instrument. Chill replacements, upgrades, optimizations as well. Uh, we'll close. Okay, we are uh, almost uh, there. I'm looking at 17 minutes, so it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, improvements in process efficiency are also uh, considered to be potential, uh, potentially uh, improving the energy efficiency and demand response management systems as well. Now we have the second case study. Uh, again, we are looking at a, uh, a an enterprise, a company, where I expect that uh, uh, you might be providing uh, your services uh, the, the most. Uh, and uh, again, I will move for the time efficiency sake already to the, to the slide where you can see actually the answers. So variable speed drives on, uh, on the motors, uh, uh, you saw it in the slides before and uh, the, the logic here is that uh, it could improve the energy efficiency, therefore eligible. Uh, installing new uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, same story. Uh, Non-slip flooring, uh, the number three measure, while uh, potentially improving the, the safety uh, uh, features of the of the company of the manufacturing plant, uh, is not uh, is not likely to improve energy efficiency, therefore ineligible. And uh, construction of uh, walls and roof of uh, the extension of the manufacturing uh, plant. Uh, this is uh, this is um, um, rather construction measure and not necessarily improving energy efficiency. However, if you do construct, if, if you do expand the manufacturing plant uh, uh, for a new extension, and, and in this new extension you install a thermal insulation uh, on the on the roof, uh, then uh, this is a different story because this uh, definitely improves the energy efficiency of that newly installed. Uh, extension and therefore can be supported under this uh, financial instrument. Recycling of uh, waste process water, reservoirs, piping and pumps. Uh, again, uh, uh, this can uh, improve, uh, uh, well, this can mainly improve the water efficiency, but uh, 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 in this instrument, uh, uh, the logic is such that uh, uh, this, this can also be supported. Uh, fluorescent lighting and uh, changing that for new LED lighting, actually similar measures in the previous case study and uh, uh, straightforward uh, eligible soffits, uh, new soffits in the old factory ground floors, uh, not, uh, not considered to be energy efficiency improving measure. And the last thing here is a uh, uh, reservoir system in basement of uh, rainwater runoff from roof, waterproofing pumps, piping, Again, uh, this is considered to be uh, potentially energy efficiency improving. And as long as recommended by, as I said a few times, but uh, it's important, I think, by uh, an energy auditor or a warranted uh, engineer, then uh, it can be supported under this financial instrument. Now, when it comes to the standardized measures, what is expected is that uh, uh, the, the residential uh, loan applicants, so the, the homeowners, uh, I mean, <laughs> energy studies or energy audits in those cases are not uh, necessarily the right way to go, probably an overkill. And for that reason, uh, an IT tool was developed, uh, 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 which is called Klimauta. And uh, I hope that you can see the, the link. Uh, it is www klimalta.eu. It is freely accessible to anybody. You can view it uh, right now. I will not go into it now because uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's something that all of you, it, it's relatively straightforward and all of you can uh, have a look at it and, uh, uh, and, uh, and test how it works. But basically uh, the tool works in a way that the user uh, in most cases, likely to be the homeowner will input information about the insulation measures under the building envelope or heating, renewables, lighting, etc. Uh, technical parameters of the technologies uh, to be installed or insulation parameters to be uh, uh, to be installed, and uh, the IT tool based on uh, multi-specific uh, uh, baseline assumptions. Uh, will uh, calculate what is the estimated energy uh, savings impact, what is the estimated uh, CO2 emission reductions impact, and where relevant, where uh, 
uh, renewable uh, investments are installed. What is also the uh, uh, what is the also the expected renewable energy uh, installed capacity? Uh, but uh, like I say, we expect that the tool will be most used by the homeowners. And when it comes to the enterprises, more tailor-made approach uh, is probably uh, uh, recommended uh, to be recommended. Uh, probably more suitable. And uh, and for those cases, uh, the Climalta. Uh, tool is probably not going to be uh, the relevant uh, mechanism to be used. Uh, this uh, this slide actually just recaps on what I said numerous times uh, for non-standardized measures. Uh, the you know the the measure is eligible as long as recommended uh, by uh, an energy audit or detailed energy study. And in those one of those two uh, uh, assessments, uh, uh, such a, such a measure is recommended as uh, potentially energy efficiency improving uh, so that's that's the main um, factor uh, for eligibility in this case and uh, one last piece of information uh, which takes me to the end of the presentation today is that when you as uh, as uh, engineers will uh, likely be providing uh, your services to enterprises and you will be uh, you will be providing them with all kinds of information about uh, uh, how uh, how the investment measures can can improve the energy efficiency performance of their of their uh, of their project uh, there are there is certain information which is necessary uh, to be included in those studies um and it is necessary because uh, the financial intermediaries, meaning Bank of Valletta and APS Bank, they will need to report that data to the European Investment Fund. And then the European Investment Fund will need to report it to the Maltese Managing Authority and then onwards to the European Commission. And uh, on this slide, you will see exactly what we would like to kindly ask you to include in the energy studies that you provide for your clients because unless this information is included the the, the banks will actually not be able to uh, uh, to provide uh, to approve the loans so this is absolutely uh, important very very crucial and uh, and uh, here you see you know I mean what we need to uh, what we need to be included in those studies is uh, estimated annual primary energy savings in kilowatt hours the greenhouse gas reductions. Uh, in uh, tons of CO2 equivalents and then the renewable energy production capacity in megawatts. I, I, I realize that megawatts are not uh, the most appropriate unit here, but this is contractually defined by the Maltese Managing Authority and therefore there is no flexibility. So even if, we'll, if it will be very, very small numbers, uh, this is uh, this is what uh, we, need to, we need to work with. Uh, and then uh, in those uh, energy studies, uh, what we will also uh, uh, ask uh, uh, the loan applicants uh, to make sure that it's included there and therefore we will actually need to ask you as the, the engineers or the energy auditors to include there is uh, the following information. So the name of the expert providing the, uh, the study or the assessment, the signature and the stamp, the warrant number and then the information whether the, whether the person is an energy auditor, yes, no. In case no, then uh, the person is uh, a warranted engineer. Uh, this takes me to the end of the presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope I was more or less clear and uh, happy to take questions uh, if anything was uh, was not. Uh, hopefully, I will be able to provide uh, more nuanced, uh, uh, better information. So thank you. Oh, I, I apologize very much. I was uh, rolling quite... Uh, <laughs> assertively uh, michelle uh, did i miss uh, anything essential uh, would you like to complement anything please what uh, thank you uh, roman no what i just wish to point out is is you know what you mentioned at, at the very end uh, the so when you were referring to the energy study and and the indicators that would need to be included as part of the energy study and i think to a certain extent, this could be also one one of the key criteria to distinguish a bit between the standardized and non-standardized measures. Because to a certain extent, when you've got certain interventions which are relatively straightforward, then this is where the Clean Malta tool is going to be computing these these in indicators sort of uh, itself, and it, it wouldn't need therefore the the sort of the uh, 
bringing on board uh, an engineer or uh, um, MEG auditor. However, reality is that many a time businesses, their projects tend to be quite, quite complex. It's not always such a straightforward initiative. And therefore, to be able to calculate you know what what these various indicators are uh you know it's it, it, it's not the tool itself that's just going to you know give you the, the thing and this is where therefore uh the need to to be you know sort of looking at things in a holistic way and this is where therefore these the definition of the non-standardized measures uh, come in uh i think it 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 it, it helps also to understand a bit uh, in terms of you know understanding how how you know so particularly the chamber of engineers in terms of uh, being able to respond to any prospective uh, clients they might have seeking to to implement these particular measures. Thank you very Roman? much. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very Michael. much. Thank you very much, Michel, for that contribution. Thank you, Roman, for your explanation and also to Mark for the um, interesting uh, presentation overview of the um, loans available. Um, we have a couple of minutes more, six minutes to be exact. Um, uh, I'd like to pass on the ball to, to David. Um, he will be moderating any, any receiving any questions you, you might have. So please feel free um uh, to to pose any questions in in this rooms to any one of our of our pre presenters today um while thanking you for your attention thanks hi hi good afternoon thank you thank you mark and thank you roman and thank you michelle for for your interventions i i think it was it is a very interesting um, uh, proposals that you are you're coming up with and um, I don't know if, if there's anyone um, who wishes to ask any questions um, I might be the first one actually to be asking questions then um, perhaps I would like to ask as regards to the to the energy auditors um, as Michelle mentioned in in certain projects when it comes to businesses um, the project sometimes can be a bit complex and it may involve different types of energy and measure, energy and saving measures um, it is very good to have a, an electrical warranted electrical and mechanical engineer however sometimes i tend to find um, some issues when it comes to energy auditors who are not engineers um, for example, architects or, or anyone, because an energy auditor does not have to be uh, a warranted engineer. So I question here, the, uh, actually, the, when it comes to the final report, how accurate can this person be? I don't know, something that you might consider in, 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 uh, um, when it comes to uh, giving loans in, in this sense. Um, when it comes to actual businesses now i i will i'm wearing the hat I, I will be removing the hat of the chamber of engineers and i'm be wearing my electra hat i i work at electra and part of the the products that we offer are any energy saving measures um perhaps can there be a sort of small collaboration between us where we can help each other um, market the the products in that sense um i don't know if you have any feedback feedback on on this Maybe I can if start want, with, I can. I can. go ahead, Mark, please. Um, regarding the marketing of the product, obviously, uh, the information is online. Um, but obviously, we are looking at opportunities to be able to share more detailed information with potential suppliers of eligible costs in the market. Um, we have clients, so, you know, asking for products, and I can offer it. I can tell you, listen, are you aware of this? So that's something that we can do. Yes, um, obviously I can share the PowerPoint presentations and stuff for your perusal, but as well, just on a wider scale, I am looking at trying to do it with suppliers who do offer this kind of things across the board. Yes, exactly. Um, to do exactly what you're saying. So yes, um, by all means, we'll be open to the idea. Thank you. On maybe I will just say on the other question. I mean. 
I'm not um, I'm not as familiar with uh, with the the features of the of the multi system when it comes to the the energy auditors. Uh, I will just say that in general, in principle, uh, the the EIB and the European in, the EIB group, uh, which combines the EIB and the European Investment Fund, in principle, we accept uh, in our operations the energy audits provided by energy auditors uh, if they are licensed in the local market. Now, you know, there, there are sometimes, uh, I mean, sometimes we hear feedback in different countries that uh, you know, I mean, uh, in, in sometimes we hear the feedback that uh, to get the to get the license, you really need to be an energy expert, and there is uh, no, there is nothing. In uh, in other contexts, sometimes we hear that uh, it is actually not so difficult, and not every energy audit is as accurate as it maybe could be. Uh, it is a bit difficult to make that distinction uh, from our side. It is a bit of a you know, I mean, we we will not be recommending any particular engineers or any particular auditors this is the decision of the of the of the uh, project promoter uh, who they choose and uh, they are probably actually much more knowledgeable about the, the local market than the EIB is and they should be in a better position to choose to choose the right person the right expert uh, for that assessment um, I will also say that when it comes to the accuracy of the assessment of course the more accurate the better in principle but when it comes to actually uh, the loans provided under this financial instrument, there are no, as I said, there are no minimum energy savings thresholds that need to be achieved in order for the loan uh, to be eligible or for the project to be eligible. So even if there are, you know, if there is, if there is some level of inaccuracy, it's actually not the end of the world for the for the loan uh, applicant or for the for the bank, but of course, I mean, I understand. I understand your point. Uh, the more accurate, the better. But uh, uh, the the best the best uh, I think uh, we can do is sort of leave that decision onto the project promoter. I don't know if Mark or Michelle would like to complement or no, I mean, refine. Uh, what what I would add to what you just said, Roman, is that obviously the project promoter wouldn't be engaging. The, the, the expert just for the purposes of this report. If there is a project that needs to be done, then they're going to be choosing the expert that can also be addressing the other matters that need to be addressed as part of the project. So it does, in my mind, it doesn't make sense to be appointing an engineer for one thing and then someone else to be doing just the application. So, you know, I, I, I would think that, you know, sort of, the, the 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 two would go hand in hand, um, but again, like Roman said, um, uh, you know, sort of at the end of the day, uh, there is the flexibility, uh, and and uh, even picking up on the point that Roman mentioned before about the level of accuracy and there not being a minimum threshold. Um, just 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 to clarify a bit on 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 the point you mentioned, Roman. I think the point here is that there's no such thing as a big project or a small project. So no matter how small a project is in terms of the savings, uh, you know, sort of uh, every project is 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 valid and and eligible for 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 uh, green financing. There is no minimum criteria beyond which uh, a project becomes eligible. Okay, thank you. Any any other questions, perhaps? David, if, if there are no questions right now, I would may I ask uh, for one more minute uh, to show uh, one feature of the Klimalta website that I did not. I I realize we are. But it will really be just one minute, and I yes, think it might be useful can, for the colleagues. We can have, we have so I will share my screen once more. And uh, could you please confirm uh, if you can see the website uh, Klimalta Climate Impact Calculator now? Yes, yes. <clears throat> Perfect. You might so you might to hide the bar at the bottom. Uh, Roman. Uh, thank you, thank you, Michelle. Perfect. So I mean. Uh, 
the the thing that I want to show you is, you know, I mean, the main feature of the website is to eval, you know, evaluate the investment or the en energy efficiency uh, features of the of the investment. But uh, you know, as I said, this will be rather for the homeowners to be used and not so relevant for you. But what is relevant for you on this website as uh, energy experts are uh, two documents here at the bottom under further information. So the first piece of document here, the full list of eligible standardized measures. So if you click on the download, uh, you will then be taken to the PDF uh, file where you will basically see all the standardized measures listed, which I showed you today in the, in the presentation. So this is something which uh, you might find useful just to be aware of, you know, it is to be found here on this climalta.eu website. The second document here, which I think might be relevant for you, uh, and in fact, it really is, uh, for enterprises investing in non standardized measures, uh, make sure your energy audit or detailed energy study includes the necessary information. And here, you will be again taken to a, a PDF uh, file, which, uh, which again, is the information I showed you in the, in the presentation. And it is the one pager which ideally would be Attached at the somewhere at the top of the of the uh, of the study which you prepare for your clients, and like I say, you know it is the the energy savings, the CO2 reductions, and renewable energy capacity installed, and then the information about the expert who uh, who provided this assessment. So just for you to know that this file can also be easily accessed on the climalta.eu website, and this is something that might be relevant for you. Again, if you would like, you can. Uh, play with the tool, but uh, yeah, this this was one more comment that I wanted to make, and uh, thank you for giving me the time for that. Um, Roman, just a question. I, while scrolling to that document, there was a, a requirement, requirement to write the warrant number. Um, as such, an energy auditor does not have a warrant, so I'm not sure if that then um, singles down to engineers only. Good question. Yeah, if if uh, if there are uh, if there are uh, energy auditors who are not warranted engineers, then in those cases uh, they will not be able to provide the number. But that is not an issue. It will be uh, their their stamp and signature and the name uh, will be still there. And in that case, it will be it will be flagged there that uh, they are an energy auditor. We might look at that report once more to make that a bit clearer so that this. Uh, kind of question or confusion we we don't raise it basically with the formulation so thank you for for raising that point but uh, yes uh, uh you know the the requirement is that the expert must be a warranted engineer or certified energy auditor and uh, either of those works okay thank you for clarification we're mentioning a lot of energy auditor they in the local context, the energy auditor list is managed and administered by the regulator for energy and water services. So what we call REWS or REWS in, 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 in more Maltese pronunciation. So uh, there might be some kind of license number there as well. So energy auditors include engineers, as you correctly said, as David correctly said, but not only. Engineers, you need to do a course to qualify yourself and be licensed as, as an energy auditor. Um, I'm not sure if there are any other questions that anybody would like to ask. So perhaps if not, we can wrap up today. I believe there are no other questions. Um, uh, thank you for, for being with us. Perhaps Malcolm has another few words to say prior to closing the session. And Malcolm. Yes, I think um, uh, we had a very, very interesting session. Um, as I said, a subject which is quite close to heart to engineers, but nowadays um, it's uh, um, part of everybody's vocabulary and uh, we hope that we will hear more not only hear more about it but also such initiatives help raise more awareness on um, the importance of, of uh, investing in renewables and in, uh, in environmentally friendly solutions so 
-hmm. With that, I conclude the today's today's session. I thank again our uh, speakers, um, Mark from uh, BOV, Roman from the European Investment Bank, and uh, uh, Michel from uh, PWC. PWC. I thank them for the their 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 presence and participation. And uh, um, last but not least, our corporate sponsors, BOV, um, and then we will continue working together to explore more initiatives where we can raise, uh, we can not only um, uh, divulge further the financial instruments that exist, but also raise, raise more awareness on, on pertinent subjects such as these. So, uh, have a good rest rest of um, the evening. Menken, Menken, I'm sorry to, to interrupt. We have just one. We have question. a question. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I'll I'll just um, say this question to you. Not not sure if this question is within scope of the seminar, but just wanted to ask for the opinion of green bonds as a means of financing green projects locally. If you um, want, David, I can provide an insight into that. Okay, so what will you be providing? In yeah, I can I can share some points for with Carl. Basically, what has happened in the local market is the the stock exchange, from a capital markets point of view, has uh, set a number of criteria. So there could be obviously these would be quite sizable projects that need quite a significant amount of money, where they could actually decide to go to the capital markets to raise money through a bond in the multi-stock exchange and um, finance that project locally. So yes, there are financing options um, that use that could use green bonds um, in the local market and the stock exchange has set certain parameters on what would classify a green bond or not. Obviously this is, this is a quite a, a developing area at the moment at the market and it may it, sometimes it is a little bit difficult to classify what is a green bond and to what degree there is an amount of greenwashing as well. But if I were to categorize it, a uh, small project would fall under these kinds of lending. Green bonds would be significantly larger projects on investment. I don't know whether that answers a little bit your question, Carl. You're welcome. Um, so perhaps we can wrap up here. Thank you, everyone, and enjoy enjoy your evening. Thank, Thank you very much, Thank everyone. You.